kind of thing. And uh, I think we were, I think we focused almost entirely on uh, religion in politics or, or, or religion in general. And I was surprised that every single person that I talked to had a more adept understanding. This, this completely threw me, had a more uh, skeptical perspective than I would have imagined the common man did. And this was every person I interviewed individually. I, I, I had them all separate. So that each one didn't know what the other one was saying. I would just go sit down with some people and talk to them. Like, how is this possible? How are every one of you completely scared? All of them, hmm. you know, and, and, that, and it, it threw my, uh, I, I love finding out that I had a prejudice that I didn't know that I had because it puts my shit in check. So when I yeah. go to the, when I go to the bus stop and I pick out somebody like yeah I bet he never went through he he never got to high school it's not like he didn't got he didn't never get out of high school he never got in to high school so I go talk to that guy and he knows more than I thought the average man should it defies all the polls that I've seen that's a tiny little sample set I talked to what ten twelve people but still yeah, absolutely and I don't think we I think we can agree that based on this uh, this past election. Uh, polls don't really mean what they used to anymore. I don't think. I don't, I don't think they really have their their fingers on the um, the post. But when you're talking about you teaching, um, that's kind of why we wanted to um, to to bring you um, on here to kind of speak to that a little bit because I had a, a really good friend of mine in in college. Um, his name's Derek Hagen. So if you're listening, um, hello, Derek. Uh, Derek was a performer. He did improv at a comedy club that was downtown when I was in college. And I would go and do shows, you know, every so many weekends at that comedy club and we would work together. Um, fantastic guy. I mean, just brilliantly funny, um, smart as one of the, one of the most brilliant people I've ever met. And he does this thing called mad science where he actually goes from school to school dressed as a mad scientist. And he does, you know, really cool, interactive um, science experiments with kids. And he just goes from class to class and school to school and, um, and does that. And I hadn't spoke with him and probably when I moved from um, where I went to, uh, to school, probably been five years since I last spoke to him. And it was actually the, uh, the episode where you and Jeremy, I think had your talk. He messaged me on Facebook and said, I recently came across your, um, your channel. I didn't know that you were doing this. Um, this is so cool. Will you do me a favor? And I said, sure. And he said, I want you to pass this along to Aaron. I've watched Aaron for uh, years, ever since Aaron hit the scene. And the way that you actually did your um, videos and what you presented in your videos, he modeled in his science experiments that he teaches to those kids. So, I think it shows that, you know, that's what you like to do and that's what you're passionate about because that's one person. And the only reason that we know about it is because I knew him, you know, from our, our time together at uh, university, but there's no telling how many other hundreds, thousands of people that that's the case for that your videos are something that influences the way that they are able to kind of push that um, in a way that, you can't really do from a, from a state um, sponsored air, you know, angle, the state's going to come in and say, well, we have this particular way we want to do it. Um, these are the certain things that you, you know, you can cover, you can't cover, but when they go home and watch YouTube, the teachers are getting influenced by people like yourself. And so you getting out there and, and getting that message out to a larger audience, I think is <clears throat> super important, especially um, in today's day, when Steve has a fourth grade teacher that believes the earth is flat, how can you get a job teaching kids if uh, you think stunned. the earth is flat? That's what I was, I, you know, and I wish she would have told me at the time, but of course, this was long before I was doing any of this. But uh, um, yeah, I don't know how that, that manifests. How, how do you have somebody in the educational field that could be literally that stupid? Um, it seems <laughs> kind of ironic. Um, and by the way, you know, you're talking about people that have had influence. Um, I don't know if Arn, have you been really been. Uh, seeing them but i've been tagging things occasionally on different things from comments from people that have used your name and, and my name and other people's name that have actually 
changed their their entire life because of things that have been said, things that I've watched on, on videos. Um, and that's just, there's no greater words to describe that feeling. And you have it, I have it happen occasionally, you know, very, very few, I could count them on maybe a hand or two. You've had dozens, dozens and dozens and, and probably even hundreds. And so um, that must be a hell of a feeling to know that you've had so much influence on on people to get them to think critically and understand concepts that maybe they didn't quite understand before, but now they do. I, I, I blogged about this uh, a few days ago. Somebody notified me that three weeks ago, he was a Bible-believing, uh, door-to-door canvassing Jehovah's Witness. And that he came to somebody's door and that person cited me and told him to go look up my videos. The guy said he consumed a bunch of my videos and then he had to write me to tell me that he's an atheist now. Hey, that was me. I mean, you and you and Matt Dillon's video when you were on the atheist experience. That's uh, that's actually how we, uh, you know, I asked you to, the reason I asked you to come on the show in January when we first started because you, that episode where you and him were on the atheist experience. I was at my youth group um, that Sunday and a couple of my friends were talking about this video that was on YouTube of these atheists. Uh, who do they think they are saying this and 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 that and. I walked over and leaned in and watched a couple of seconds of the video and said, send that to me. I'll watch it um, later. And that's what broke the dam for me watching the, because when you go through um, for 25 years, you go through, like, it's almost like a bubble. It's so weird, but you don't hear the bad things. Like um, I don't remember ever hearing about the slavery issue or if uh, y- your daughter gets raped, the rapist has the opportunity to um, either pay um, whatever fee that or, or fine that was, or marry the actual um, victim. You don't hear any of that stuff. So when I got home and watched that video, I was going and, you know, internally you're going, that's not true. There's no way they're making this stuff up. And then you cite the verse, you go to the verse, you read it. Okay. How can this line up with all this other stuff that you're being told every Sunday and Wednesday night? It, it just does not line up and you can't i don't think if you're honest i don't think you can try to make that work so yeah. i mean you and him are are you know responsible for me becoming well, a, I, a clear i was i just listened to apologias and Aaron's latest apologias channel today and i i think it was seth to the best or maybe it was you i think it was you Aaron, that said the the best way to become an atheist is to read the bible and like the last the second the first time i read it cover to cover it was the catholic bible and yeah that was like wow there's so much nasty in this book yeah it's it's strange that um you don't hear that when you're in it i know that doesn't say it does that, that doesn't sound like it makes sense unless you were you know in it but you really don't hear the, the bad stuff and why you're not able to go back and, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty but you don't go back and look for it. So it's, it's literally sitting there until somebody goes, Hey, what about this? How do you square <laughs> this up? And you can't. What's, what, what's more frustrating to me is when I, when I meet people who know that they can't defend their belief and they don't care, they're going to keep believing it even if they know it's wrong. That's the one that mystifies me. And it's like that Jaronism thing. You know, he knows that we, we can get, you know, if we had the, pl- the money for airplane tickets, we'd be definitely disproving his ass in a very public way. But he doesn't, he, he's not interested in that. He does not care what the truth is. He knows that the truth is not what he believes it to be. He, he believes in terms of make-believe. It's the power of pretend. And because he gets some kind of some weird fame or notoriety. And have you seen his fans? Oh, we, uh, we see them on a daily basis. Yes, they're pretty <laughs> wow. We see them on a daily basis. We've seen them. They've come over and said hi. Uh, yeah. d- d- well, and I'll tell you this. Um, we had um, Reds made, put a challenge to, to Jaronism to come up with a model of the flat earth that worked. Jaronism said that he had one, and they agreed well, this to— This was after he talked to me, right? Yes, this was— Oh, yeah. This, this was, was this past Friday. Um, yeah. This this past Friday. So everybody is— coming into this thing where Jaron's got a model that he's going to put forth and we're going to, you know, nobody expected it to do anything, but we're going to listen to whatever it was. So 
Um, there are uh, close to a thousand people watching live this debate. We're all sitting here waiting patiently to hear this uh, model. He goes on for the first 15 minutes, no mention of a model, only about what feels good. If it, if it feels good, that's how you know it's true. That um, it's got to, you got to feel it in on the inside. That's how you know that what you're, what you're dealing with makes sense and is, is true that NASA is the, the people who are lying to you and they're so, trying to deceive you. So when I get drunk, I really am 10 foot tall and bulletproof. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, feels that it, good. Uh, it was confirmed. <laughs> yeah. That was literally what he was saying, though. And and so Sean, who was moderating um, on here, stopped him and said, you said you were coming up with a model. Where's your model? At uh, at like, I think it was 45 minutes in the debate, Reds asked him a very, I think, telling question that it should have ended right there. Red said, are you saying that you do not have a working model of a flat Earth? No, I do not. Will you admit now that as it stands, our model of a global Earth works better than the one that you have? He fully admitted that live to a thousand people. And in the next day, went straight back to pushing his bullshit about why the globe Earth is not a thing. He didn't lose one sub. He didn't lose one Patreon. His followers don't give a fuck. They're just as dishonest as he is. In fact, exactly. didn't the next day when he accused you and Steve of being liars? Oh, yes. 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 Which um, is a badge of honor. I mean, as the right, yeah. engineer says, and, and we agree wholeheartedly, to be called a liar by a flat earther, you're doing something right. We were painted as the, um, of course, as, as liars. And and I think that's fantastic. If um, they're me and Steve a liar, then we're doing something correct, I think. It, but um, it but I mean, that. Isn't it disturbing, though, that he doesn't lose any, any, any supporters? I mean, we see this with so many different things. I mean, look across politics, you know, as, as well as science. I mean, we have pe- people that are doing outrageous things, saying ridiculous, indefensible things, and their people can show, my man is a liar. He lies every day. He's lied about everything. He's lied to me, and he's fucked me over because of his lies, and I'm going to continue to support him, and I won't hear anything against him the hell is that about and god is the only answer that's the that's the thing that's the crazy thing with that though you have evangelicals who for years push against everything that donald trump st- stands for like if 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 it was a uh, if it was in 4 years earlier they would have been against and just downing everything and condemning everything that, that trump does but because they feel like they have a um, a hand in the white house now they're willing to look over, forgive, um, not pay any attention to when he comes out every day doing things that they get up on Sunday mornings and say, this is a sin. This is an abomination. The porn stars, the, the lying, the, um, the, just the deceit. Yeah, well, I think we need to but save that they, for another show. <laughs> yeah. That could go on yeah, for two more hours. Yeah. yeah, that could, that could, but, um, but yeah, it, it's because I think, and this is my, the, on the flatter thing with, with Jaren, is and the reason that he doesn't lose subs, because that crowd likes being the the black sheep. They like the edginess of their movement. They like that it's being looked down upon, or that um, the shields try to stop them from finding the truth. Ninety percent of them, I guarantee you, know there's nothing to a flat Earth. Nothing. Zip. Zilch not, a, but it's a cool club to be in because you get all kind of attention and you get um, all this kind of publicity and you're in the middle of everything and you get to go around and, and troll. It's a club. That's all. Okay, yeah, it's a club for adults. I was I, I was on somebody. In, I, I look at uh, different Facebook pages every now and again, including people in my own family. And I'm so so I'm looking at people in my own family's Facebook and I'm thinking, oh man, everything on this. Everything on this page is ultra right wing, religious, racist. It's just, it's all of these stereotypes all together. Nothing is correct. Everything is demonstrably wrong. We'll never have that conversation. That person and I will never even be able to discuss any of the posts on his Facebook. This just won't happen. 
because he doesn't care right. yeah. what's what's well, real and what isn't. Their, their intellectual.